I just finished Clorin's story quest. Kinda felt it was Navia's story quest, but anyways, there is one thing that I always thought that was needed for discussion, was about her position in Fontaine's justice system. She is a champion duelist. And that is indeed the most useless job in Fontaine. Not only that, but it is also a kind of a loophole in Fontaine's judiciary. Alright everyone Maharib is here and I know I said I will talk about Clorin's kit and abilities, but that is the topic you can find everywhere on the internet. I wanted to do something different this time. I mean what would be the difference between me and other content creators if I will do the same as everyone else, right? So subscribe to my channel and also join my discord if you have similar interesting topics to share. I would love to hear them and who knows, I can create a video on them as well. But for now, let me briefly explain how Fontaine's justice system works. Well, it's pretty simple, they have a court system, where trials happen, we have a judge, witnesses, and all that good stuff. But there is a small twist. When a criminal is charged guilty, he still gets one chance to save his honor. By a duel against the champion duelist, there are always two outcomes from it. If they surrender, they will continue with the standard procedures according to their crimes, otherwise, it will end in the death of the criminal by the hands of Clorin. But what about the third or fourth outcome? I mean, what will happen if Clorin lose a duel? What will Clorin choose? Will she be willing to die in the duel? Or will she surrender? What will happen if she surrenders? Will she lose her job? And what will happen to that criminal who won against Clorin in a duel? Will he be set free to roam around the streets of Fontaine? Such a powerful criminal who won the duel against Clorin. What if he commits a crime again? But he always knows he can just challenge the champion duelist and win and will set free again. Or will Nouvellet intervene if he sees that the criminal is overpowering Clorin? But if that's the case, then why is Clorin needed? Look, I don't have the answers to these questions. But first, let's get to know is that even possible? Judging from Clorin's voice lines, I've faced many opponents in my duels. Most of them I defeated. The rest surrendered. Hmm? Uh, no, I have never lost a duel. We can already assume there is no one in Fontaine other than Nouvellet, who is stronger than Clorin. Navia is a brute force attacker, but I doubt she can win against Clorin in a duel. Chavruz isn't at the same level as Clorin. Liney can pull up some magic tricks, but I still think Clorin takes that match as well. If anything, only Riathusli is the one I can see who can give serious trouble to Clorin in a duel. But I don't think even he is as fast and powerful to defeat Clorin in a duel. And I know you'll bring this scene here. But guys, that was water versus ice. You can't expect an Electro Vision holder to do anything significant in that particular scenario other than giving emotional support. Just kidding. And the rest of Fontaine characters don't even hold a candle against Clorin, it's not even funny. Considering all this, it makes sense to have her as a champion duelist so no one would be able to get past her. Right? Wrong. It does work for ordinary people. But there are still characters who can challenge Clorin and win in a fair fight and has the potential to get away with the crime that they committed. Sure Fontaine don't have anyone at this point, but in Monstand, I'm not considering Archons here, but even if we say characters like Jean, where Eula or Diluc can't win against Clorin, Klee can destroy the whole arena where they'll be fighting. Albedo can destroy an entire nation, Clorin is no match for him. Though Albedo won't break any laws, and the case of Klee can also get covered because of her age, but there is a possibility, right? I can say even Mona or Lisa can also outsmart Clorin if they happen to do anything against Fontaine's law. Keep that in mind that I'm being very hypothetical here. Liyue is also full of extremely overpowered characters like Shunha, Xianyun, Xiao, and Ganyu. You cannot say Clorin has any chance of defeating any of them in a duel. Even Yelan can give Clorin a difficult time, but these Adapti are just different breed altogether. Ningguang and Beidou are also not going to lose against Clorin. Can't say about Beidou, but Ningguang is definitely throwing Clorin out of arena. I know you guys will point out the Leviathan feat in Beidou's favor, but we have to keep in mind that when you fight in a ship against a beast, it's always group effort and tactical contributions. It's not like Beidou alone without a vision just swim in the ocean and defeated Leviathan all on her own. And since the duel will be 1v1 in an arena, Clorin will have upper hand against Beidou. But all that aside, what if Xiao do something he should not supposed to do in Fontaine due to his unstable state of mind? And things in the court end up in him having to duel against Clorin? We all know Clorin isn't winning it. So what will happen then? I couldn't find anyone who is Clorin level powerful in Inazuma, except Ye Miko maybe, or Kazuha. But I think Kazuha is overhyped because of just a single scene where he happened to use two visions at the same time. That was just a one-time incident. 
Kazaha is not as powerful as a lot of people make him out to be. To think that he will be able to win against Klorin, because that one time he was able to use the power of two visions to block a single sword slash. It's not something I can agree with. But in Sumeru, we have Sino and Wanderer. And they both are kind of lunatics in their own way. Let me remind you that if you are finding this video interesting, subscribe to this channel. And I've also created another channel for collections and playlists. If you want to support me on that channel, I would be very grateful to you. And again, joining Discord is a must. I mostly find topics from the discussions that happen in different discords. So I would love to have creative and interesting people in my Discord to talk to. So feel free to join it. You'll love it. Anyways back to the video. I can say that even Candace or Al Haytham can also give Clorin a hard time in a duel. I included Candace here instead of Deya because she is even feared by Sethos, and Deya also don't want to get her involved in any fight because she knows what would be the outcome. Clorin also appreciates how harsh desert's weather can become and how resistant a person can be when fighting beasts in the storms of the desert. I still think Candace according to lore is a very powerful character. But still I think Clorin has a chance of coming out on top. But in the case of Sino and Wanderer, as much as it hurts me to say, but Sino is still sensible enough to not break any rules in Fontaine, but even if he does and ends up having to fight Clorin, he isn't losing. And no one, I repeat, no one is going to take responsibility for the actions of Hat Guy. If he is in Fontaine, either he is going to the Fortress of Meripede, or in the Arena of Clorin, in less than a single week. Guaranteed, no questions asked. Wanderer never cared about rules, he just barge in and obliterate. I doubt he will care about not releasing any flying object on first three days of every month, or naming any pet after Furina, or calling Meliazine a she. Die. He would be like, how can this thing walk on two legs? He won't care if that Meliazine identifies as they them, he she, it, zay zen, wu wa a b c d f g. Huh? <laughs> and the worst part is, he is still either going to win against Clorind and bail out, or willingly become the number one nuisance for everyone in Fortress of Meripede. Someone even riotously will not be able to control. Trust me, Wanderer and Fontaine will be an utter disaster. So what will happen in both of these scenarios? Will he be bailed out after winning the duel against Clorind? Or will he be sent to the Fortress of Meripede? And what if he becomes even bigger trouble in Fortress of Meripede that even riotously won't be able to deal with? Then what will happen? Will Nouvellet have to jump himself in? And I can say that it can happen still by staying within Fontaine's law. What happens in Fortress of Meripede is of no concern to outside world. Wanderer can literally challenge riotously and claim his victory and still stay within Fontaine's law. Or he can just tease them with a challenge against Clorind and win. Anyways the point is, the system in which you get into the trial, if found guilty, you do your sentence, was already proper and complete setup. There was no point in having to hire a person like Clorin to just add an extra step and waste everyone's time. I mean in both scenarios, I cannot find any reason for this position. If someone can't defeat Clorin, that duel is just a waste of time. It's better to just throw them into the fortress of Meripede, and if someone can defeat her in a fight, does that mean he is free from all the charges and that's it? Do let me know what you guys think of that. For me, she could have been in a much better position than just an executioner. That thing, Nouvellet could do that himself. We already saw him confronting Tartaglia. But I should also clarify that Nouvellet intervened in this scene because Tartaglia didn't follow the rules of court and just barged and start smashing all these toys instead of actually appealing for the duel against Clorin. So we couldn't saw the fight between Clorin and Tartaglia. But I think Clorin has a chance to fight against Child at base, but I don't know about Foul Legacy. I think if Clorin can survive, dodge and tank Foul Legacy's attacks, she might have a chance of winning the duel. But instead of Tartaglia, I don't think Clorin can win against any other Harbinger. I made this tier list of my opinions on which playable characters I think Clorin can win against in a fight, and those who she cannot win against. So if one of them commit a crime and end up winning the duel, what would happen to them? I would like to have some answers in the comments section, and my beautiful wife has something to say to you guys. Listen to her carefully. Hi. I am Muharib's wife, Layla. My husband would be very happy if you leave a like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to join our Discord server and he will see you in the comment section. Peace!